Hello, I'm Dr. Daniel Griffin. And I'm Nixon Dubai. And today we will be discussing palpitations. Be still my heart. <laughs> I guess this would be, that's what people come in wanting. <laughs> they want their heart to be it's still. Not and still they still. feel like the heart is not be, being that's still. Right. That's right. Um, this is actually very common, I have to say. I, it's a very common reason why people go to the, to the clinician. Uh, and it's very worrisome because people worry, they worry about their heart because your heart is something that needs to be working all the time. Indeed. Can't take like a few hours off. As opposed to your brain. <laughs> your brain can take a few hours off and it's okay. Every night my brain takes a little bit of a, little bit of a pause. Uh, at least part of the brain, the lower part keeps me breathing and the rest, but the higher function. I hear that. I um, hear that. But, but the heart, let, let's talk about um, a little bit. What, what do people mean when they say, I'm having palpitations? Yeah, what does that mean, actually? Yeah, and there, there's several different ways that, um, that it can present. They could say they feel an irregularity. And the more uh -huh. they pay attention, the more they notice. And um, so people are used to or people are almost in the background to the fact that the heart is beating bunk, 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 nice constant rhythm. Right. And when there's a little bit of a pause or there's a beat that is stronger than what they're used to, or, or there's a bit of irregularity to it, um, even if it's not affecting the blood pressure, even if it's not affecting how they feel, if they recognize that, that can be something that brings a person into medical attention. Yep. Um, so what we're going to get to the point where we talk about it having an actual effect upon the hemodynamics, the blood supply to the brain, etc. But just the irregularity um, will, will bring them in with concerns. About half the time when someone comes in saying they have palpitations, about half the time it's a primary heart issue. About half the time it's other issues. It might be psychological. Um, it might be that they've drug related and by drugs, it might be that they had a double espresso, they might have had like a really strong coffee. Um, they may have had something sort of um, less socially acceptable. Um, so there are other things that are not primarily heart related that can cause palpitations. But palpitations, like so many of the common complaints, are so very often benign that we want to be careful to identify those that are not benign, those that are actually um, suggesting something more serious is going on. And um, how do you do that? <laughs> he asked. <laughs> so I think there, I'm going to say there's two main ways we're going to do that. Um, one of the first is to try to get a sense when they tell you, describe it, beat it out on the table for me. Uh, because there's a, there's a bit you could do in the history before you even sort of lay hands or listen or bring our technology to bear. So sometimes they'll describe, and I, I try to get them to tap it out if they can. Go tap, ah. tap, 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 pause, bunk. Tap, 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 pause, bunk. Now that, that would be a, a classic presentation of what we call a premature um, depolarization. And so what's happening is the, what they're feeling is yeah. actually the beats are fine, but then you get electrical activity and contraction before the heart fills. And then the next beat after it, the heart is now filled even more. And then they feel that large beat. So you're going to see on your electrical activity, which we're going to talk about how we do that, you might see the beats along and then you see this pause and then um, another thing they might describe, and this is quite common as a person gets older, is that it's just completely irregular. There's just no rhythm to it. Bum, 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 bum. It's just eek. Yeah. Um, sometimes the palpitations are um, little spurts of really quick heartbeats. Say, I'm going along, it's fine, and I'll have boom, 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 and then it'll be fine again. Would you call that tachycardia? So tachycardia. Um, another thing they might describe for you is the heart goes really slow for a while. And so everything's fine, and then they have periods of slow heart rate. Um, sometimes they'll be describing associated symptoms with the beat. So you've right. got them trying to give the beat for you. Yeah. They may say, when this happens, I feel lightheaded, I feel dizzy, ah, right. I feel like I might lose consciousness. Sure. 
They may even have episodes where they lose consciousness. Mm. Um, they may tell you that when I get this, my lips start to feel numb and tingly and my fingers start to feel numb and tingly. Eek. That, interesting enough, is usually psychological. Really? We see that um, a lot of times in individuals that are hyperventilating from anxiety oh. and they're actually affecting the, the, and what you want them to do is stop hyperventilating. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Palpitations and all these things will go away. Right. But no, those, those sort of psychiatric um, presentations often present with fingers and lips, where our cardiac is gonna present more of, I'm starting to feel like I might have to lay down, I feel like I might lose consciousness. So there's quite a bit we can get just from the history awesome. leading into this. Yeah. Um, we may also ask about physical activity. If this is someone who is very active and not compromised, and they're describing one of those patterns, we may be starting to think of something more benign. Hmm. Um, now we have our exam. We do. And one of the first things we can do is just feel the pulse. Yeah. You know, and I, I think this is almost discounted in modern medicine. Right? <laughs> how, how, how often does the clinician just hold your wrist and just feel the pulse for, you, you for a minute? A, a non-digital watch for that. <laughs> you know, you, al you almost, yeah, you, you almost don't need to be doing the timing because you get a sense of bunk, bunk, bunk. You have a sense that that would be a normal rhythm. So what's the normal heart rate for a person that doesn't suffer from palpitations? So it's, it depends is always our answer. <laughs> um, and no, we have several charts because it's, it's age and activity level um, uh, adjusted. A small child has what people would perceive an adult, a very fast heart rate. Right. And um, an adult is gonna have um, slower heart rate. As we get older, we become, I think we mentioned, cooler and slower. <laughs> I resemble that remark. <laughs> um, now, once we've taken the pulse, which is a great way of getting the rhythm, um, the cardiac exam can also be helpful. This is going to allow us, as I mentioned, half of the time the complaint of palpitations will be heart related. That might be electrical related, but it yep. may also be valvular related. Right. So our exam, we're going to be listening to the, the heart sounds. We're gonna be listening to the rhythm. We're gonna be listening for any valvular abnormalities, any murmurs, any gallops, extra heart sounds. Of course. Um, and then what is tremendously helpful is again, a little bit of technology, the electrocardiogram, the ability to actually measure yeah, the electrical right. activity. That's right. That's right. And I will say, as, as I mentioned, this is gonna be a common complaint so if you don't have the ability to do an electrical cardiogram, it may be that you're gonna be sort of stuck. Exactly. You're gonna be limited at this point of saying, well, I think it's okay, I think it's benign. Right. And as mentioned, there now are these, um, these small devices that work with smartphones and particularly for palpitations where a rhythm strip, uh -huh. a really just a, a you know, limited lead EKG is gonna allow you to look at the rhythm and then see, are we, you know, and what is wonderful is to have a patient watch the rhythm strip. You can right. actually set up the phone and they've <laughs> sure. got their fingers on the electrodes and then um, have them tell you when they feel the symptoms. Right. A certain percent of the time, um, it'll occur frequently enough that you can actually capture it right there. Hmm. Um, it might take a little time. Yep. Um, you know, you might ask an assistant you know, have them sit there and do this. It might take a little longer than, you know. Um, unfortunately, sometimes you need to do a full multi-lead or we call it 12 lead EKG. And then in some, some situations, and this is gonna be a resources issue, is they have 24 hour or even longer electrocardiograph monitors. Exactly. So what about treatment? What are you gonna treat? What if it's not caused by anything? <laughs> Stop drinking that latte. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's great. So, so no, number one, in most situations, you're going to be able to reassure them. Exactly. Mo most palpitations are benign. Right. Most palpitations by the history, by the lack of concerning symptoms, um, possibly by electric cardiogram, will be benign. But the person will get into a cycle of noticing it and getting more concerned and noticing yeah, yeah, it and getting more right, concerned. Right, and then I, right. I think they may even be having more palpitations because they're <laughs> now anxious. Um, so that could be one thing. Often, it's, often it 
often, and I say in most cases, it's that. Um, sometimes it can be something more serious, sure. where you may even need to refer them to somebody else. Um, and then sometimes, and I, and I want to say this is not um, common, but in some situations, beta blockers might be indicated. Yeah. You might use a medicine that slows down the heart rate, oh, um, because for some people it can be debilitating. It can be so um, anxiety producing when the heart either goes fast or, or these um, irregularities are developing. I recall in the old days, I'm presuming that this is still in vogue somewhere, there are implantable devices which regulates the heartbeat when it's irregular. That's a pretty extreme way to go, but I remember the company, it was named Cordis, C-O-R-D-I-S. Okay. They were located in Florida, and I actually knew the guy who founded that company, and it was like, they're implantable, and there are people who probably have undergone some kind of a cardiological um, surgical procedure, like a valve replacement or something like this, or maybe they had bypass surgery where they had damaged portions of the heart, which affected the, the rhythm of the heart. And this thing Yeah, I will, I will say in, um, in areas where <coughs> the, where I'll say resource rich areas, yeah. um, a lot of these implantable cardiac devices, both pacers, pacemakers, pacers, that's what I meant to say. so implantable pacemakers, exactly, exactly. or even implantable pacers combination defibrillators. Right. Um, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of situations where those may be indicated. Sure. Um, sometimes it's a pure electrical activity issue. Sometimes it can be due to heart failure. There's some yeah. studies in certain um, contexts where it has a benefit for mortality. Um, you know, and sometimes the palpitations are coming from valvular issues. So, oh, right. um, so when someone has, um, again, a more serious, this percent of the time when it's not benign, um, again, you want to be looking, what are the resources that your patients might have access to other than what your clinic might be providing? Right. So. All right. Well, I think hopefully that's a straightforward <laughs> topic, but it has a huge, <laughs> a huge scope of all the things that exactly. might initially come to you as palpitations. No question. So if it's something benign, reassurance. If it's secondary to another cause, treat the treat the other cause. Right. If it's psychological, address it that way. And if it's more serious, make sure you refer your patients to uh, the resources and the people that can take care of them. So. All right. Terrific. Well, thank you very much for joining us. See you next time. <laughs>